Hello everyone, this is Professor Robert Solis. Welcome to this video lesson. We're going to be talking about graphical user interfaces. And in this particular lab, you can see that you're going to create a label. You're going to create several buttons that obviously change the font or the font background, um, or the background of the label, I should say. Um, also, we can change some formatting, such as bold, italic, underline. In terms of this image, if we were to shrink the image or stretch the image, uh, that's going to change the size of this, and the size in terms of the width and the height will be displayed here in these two 3D labels. We'll also have a show image, height image to make this either visible or invisible, and then we'll have the exit button that will terminate the program. Here are some of the various user requirements and also the software requirements. Basically what I've done is to give you the different names for the different objects so you can use these as a reference to design your program. All right, well, I'm going to switch over to Visual Studio, and I've already created this graphical user interface, and let me just show you some of the different properties here so that you can match what I've got on your screen. So, for example, I changed the form name, as you can see here, to CSIS 111, and then I have this uh, picture box, and I have several buttons, so let me go ahead and select the picture box, and you can see here that's PCT image, and then for the label, I have this LBL message, Let's take a look at these different buttons, BTN red, BTN green, BTN blue, and then for these three buttons, I have BTN red BK for red background, BK, and I'm sorry, green BK, and then also blue BK for background. This button over here, we're going to call that BTN bold, BTN italic, BTN underline, or BTN under, I should say. And then for this button, stretch image, that's going to be BTN stretch. This one's going to be BTN shrink. I have these two labels here. This one's going to be LBL width, LBL height, and that's going to be the image width and height. Uh, then I have show image, which is called BTN show image, or IMG, and this is going to be BTN hide IMG. And then finally, we have the BTN exit button, and uh, I guess that's about it. Now, as you can see here, for this particular image uh, box, what I did was, uh, let me go ahead, go ahead and show you via the toolbox. So I took this picture box and then I dragged and dropped it to the form. And so then I, it sits right here. I changed the name to PCT image. So that's the first thing you're going to want to do. The next thing you want to do is to assign an image to it. So at first it doesn't come with an image. It'll be blank. So I'm just going to use one of the standard images in the picture folder, in the My Documents folder. So what you'll do is you'll click over the image property and then click the three ellipses button, which is this button right here. Once it does that, um, you can import a resource. Okay, so if I click import, it's going to say, where do you want to get this from? Well, if you click on my documents and then if you click on my pictures, uh, you'll see that down at the bottom over here it is, my or sample pictures. These are the three sample pictures that pretty much come with all versions of Windows. So I'll just select this one over here, sunset. So I'll click open. And uh, then I'll click OK. So now you can see that that image is now part of this picture box. And um, there's another thing that I want to show you as well. All right, so for the size mode, you'll see that the clue says that this controls how the picture box will handle the image placement and control sizing. So currently, I said it's a zoom. I think at first it's uh, set to normal. And you can see that that doesn't look good. And let's take a look at these different modes. So stretch image see what that looks like so if I were to no matter how I alter this it'll stretch the image so that it'll um, accompany the size of whatever the uh, image box is or picture box I should say if I say auto size you can see what that does uh, if I say center image you can see what that does and then finally if I say zoom this is I think this is the best option because what in essence what this does is no matter how I change the picture box size it's going to maintain the aspect of the picture in terms of the x and y axis so it'll maintain that x and y axis but at the same time it um, shows me the picture inside as you can see there so it'll adjust the size of the image and I think that's the one I'm going to go for. Now let's talk about uh, programming so the first thing we'll do is we'll take a look at the rent font button so I double click on red font and notice the code here is pretty easy what we're going to do is we want to change the font for this label, and that's LBL message. So what we'll do is LBL message for color. Uh, we'll set, we'll assign the color red. So if you type in color dot, 
it'll give you a listing of all the different colors. Let me show that to you. So color dot, and then you can see all the different colors. And in this case, you want red. So therefore, we're going to assign the four color, which is really the same thing as a font color in this case, for the label. We'll do the same thing for green font, as you can see here. So color green is going to be assigned to the four color of this label. We're also going to do the same thing for the blue font. Uh, as you can see here, the color blue, so color.blue, we're going to assign that to the four color property of LBL message. So these three buttons change the four color of the label. Now these next three buttons change the background in it, uh, background color. So to do that, for example, for red background, I'll double click here, and you can see that, again, we're using color red, but we're using not the four color, but the back color property. The back color property is going to change that for the label. We'll do the same thing for green and also for blue. So as you can see here for green, we're setting that color to the back color property of the label. And same thing over here, we're setting the blue color to the back color of the label. So that takes care of the first six buttons. Let's talk about formatting. For example, bold. If I double click on the bold button, uh, notice what I have to do. So for BTN bold, what I'm going to do is I'm going to instantiate. Every time you see that keyword new, you've got to think instantiation. And instantiation is just a fancy word that just simply means create. We're going to create a new object of type font. Well, what is this font going to be? I mean, is it going to be Courier? Is it going to be Times New Roman? Is it going to be um, Arial? Well, in this case, it's going to be the same type of font that's inside of this label. Well, what is the font of this label? All I have to do is go back over here to the design. I can look at the properties. Uh, I really don't care what it is, but I'm just trying to show you here. Notice that the font name is San Microsoft Sans Serif. So what this is saying over here in terms of the code is it's saying, take whatever the font is of the label, and that's what we'll use. Now, I could have done this. I could have said, I want the Arial font. I could have said, I want Times New Roman. Right? I could have done those things. But instead, I'm, uh, what I'm saying here is just give me the font type that's already in this LBL message, which I think I, what I just shared with you. What did I say? I already forgot. Goodness gracious. Uh, what is the font? Um, actually, I should have clicked over here. Sorry. Uh, yeah, Microsoft Sans Serif. So whatever this font type is, which you saw was Microsoft Sans Serif, that's the kind of font it's, that's going to have over here. Next, what's the font style going to be? Is it going to be bold, italic, and underline? Look at all these options. Bold, italic, regular, so forth and so on. Well, obviously, if we click the bold button, we want this thing to be bold. So now we're going to change that to the bold option. Well, in terms of changing the italic, or the uh, change the format to italic, same thing. Uh, for the italic click, we're going to instantiate a new font object of type class. Uh, of, of class, I should say, uh, font. And what what is the font going to be? Is it Arial, Times New Roman? Well, whatever the font is of the label, leave it as is. In terms of the font style, change it to italic. We assign that to the font property of the message, of the LPL message label. And so that's how we change the font, or how we change the font style, or font size, or font type, so forth and so on. And basically the same thing for our underline. Uh, just in this case, we're changing the font style to underline, as you can see here. Everything else is the same as the previous three buttons, or previous two buttons that we've just created. Okay, let's take a look at stretch image and shrink image. So what if I gave you the requirement to take this image, and if I click shrink, it's going to cut it to about half. If I click stretch, it's going to restore it to what it looks like right now. Well, in this case, let me double click on stretch image, and you'll notice that uh, if I click stretch image, I want to change the width of the picture box and the height of the picture box. So these are two properties of the image. In fact, let me go back over here to the design and let me share this with you. If I open up the properties panel, let me tack this down, let me select the picture box. Notice that I have size. So for the size property, it says that the width is a certain size and it says that the height is the certain size as well. Well, in this case, uh, 296 and 216, what I did was I just looked over here and I said, given this size of the image, uh, watch this. If I change the size to something like this, notice how it changes it to 220, uh, 162. Well, what I did was I resized it and I said, at, at um, a full stretch mode, it's going to look something like that, say, for example. 
Um, and let me see, I think this was supposed to be 216. Go back over here. Yeah, that's supposed to be 216. So let me just change that to 216. Enter. There we go. Okay, so the width is 296. The height of this image is 216. When I click stretch image, that's what I want for this image size. I want the width to be 296. And I also want the height to be 216. Now, um, is there going to be any text that I want to display in the LBL width and LBL height? Absolutely. I want this to show me the number of points in terms of size. Uh, I want to display the number of points. So you can see over here currently it's at width 296, height is um, 216. In fact, if I click height, notice what this says for the description. It says the size of the control in pixels or points. So how many pixels is this? Well, let's go back over here. And what, however many pixels in terms of the height of that image, let's convert that to a string and then assign that to the text property of the label. Now, notice this. Uh, if I were to select this attribute, you'll see that it says that an integer is what's returned. Do you see that? It says public property height as integer. Gets or sets the uh, height of the control. And same thing over here, right? This is going to be an integer. So this is returning an integer, and it's namely returning the integer in terms of uh, pixels. How many pixels in terms of the width of this image or in terms of the height of this image? We convert that to a string. We place that into the text property of the label. So long story short, takes the width and the height of this, puts the answer here and here. Show image and height image. So if I double click on show image, it's pretty easy. I want to show the image. How do I do that? Well, I set the visible property of PCT image. So this thing has a property called visible visible. So if I scroll all the way down, notice right what this says, determines whether the control is visible or hidden. Well, currently it's set to true, and that's what it is by default, right? So if I set this to true, you're going to see it. If I set this to false, you're not going to see it. Let me go ahead and set this back to true, and that's exactly what this code does. It's going to uh, say if the user clicks this button, <clears throat> set the visible property to true. Now if the user clicks the hide image button, which is this one right here, then we're going to set the visible property to false. So the visible property is a property that belongs to PCT image, and you can either set it to true or false based on which button the user clicks. Finally, if the user clicks the exit button, then it's just simply me.close to terminate the program. All right, so let me scroll all the way to the top. You see how many lines of code? Not too much. Let's go ahead and run the program and see what it looks like. So I'm going to go ahead and click Start Debugging which is the green arrow, green arrow right here. And the program is going to run. Here it is. And uh, let's go ahead and see what happens. So if I click red font, green font, blue font, you see what happens. Uh, if I click red background, green background, now if I click blue background, that looks weird because we have a blue font, blue background, so it looks like it's invisible. Let me go ahead and click red font so we can see that. Uh, here's bold, here's italic, here's underline. So we're basically undoing the other when I click on one of these buttons. So here it is. Here's bold. If I click italic, it's going to take the bold off and just make this italic. If I click underline, it's going to take the italic off and make this underline, so forth and so on. In terms of the image, if I click shrink image or stretch image, now you can see the values in terms of pixels. So stretch image and here's shrink image. And we're making it roughly half, as you can see here. Here's show image and hide image. So if I click hide image, it's visible attribute is set to false. Show image, it's visible attribute is set to true. What if I do this? What if I said hide image and stretch image? And now let me show image. Okay, now you can see that it's in fact stretched. And then finally, we have the exit button, which is simply me.close. And so you can see the term, the program has terminated. In fact, if I were to go to uh, this, you, don't, you just see uh, Visual Studio over here, and you also see uh, the PDF document that I have. There is no, uh, there is no program running on that after I close the program. And that's it. All right. So this is Professor Robert Solis. I hope this video lesson has been helpful. Have a good day. See you next time. Mm -hmm.